flat nose pliers, chain nose pliers, round nose pliers. You'd think that with this many tools, I'd be a plumber instead of a jewelry maker. Well, today we'll be learning one of the oldest forms of jewelry making, the art of wire wrapping, which is even older than the pharaohs of Egypt. It's a fabulous way to make earrings, bracelets, and pendants, and it's coming your way next. Hi, I'm Jackie Guerra. Welcome to my studio. This is DIY Jewelry Making. And today, we're wrapping wire jewelry. We'll set a beautiful stone with wire, and later, we'll be making birthstone earrings. Now, all of these instructions and more will be on our website at DIYNetwork.com. So just sit back and watch the artists do their work. My first guest is an accomplished wire artist and jewelry designer. Meet Connie Fox. Connie, thank you for being yes. here. Well, thank you, Jackie. It's nice to be here. Good. <laughs> and we're going to make this beautiful bracelet today, right? That's right. And you're going to show us how to... I am. Wrap it up. Wrap it up. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah, I am ready. But what's the most important thing to keep in mind before you start any kind of wire jewelry wrapping technique? Get the best tools you can. Okay. Makes all the difference in the world. Yeah, you can really nickel and dime yourself to death yes. by not buying good tools right, right from the get-go. It's a waste of money. Okay. So get the best you can afford and, uh, and you'll do fine. Great. Okay, so let's get started. Okay. Well, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to cut your mandrel wire. The mandrel is going to form the foundation of your bangle. This is 12 gauge sterling silver dead soft wire. And if you have a six inch wrist, what you're going to do is you're going to cut nine inches. If you have a six inch wrist. <laughs> <laughs> and you add a half inch. If you have a six and a half inch wrist, then you're going to add a half inch. So this is so going to be your base. You just want to make sure that this fits you. Right. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the, this wire, which is 20 gauge sterling silver twisted wire, and I'm going to roll it on the mandrel to form a coil. And what will happen is I'll end up with this piece here. Oh, okay. So you, this is just a matter of wrapping. Wrapping it around your mandrel. Okay. And so you end up with this. I'm going to string some beads onto my mandrel wire and put spacers in there. And so, Connie, do you suggest that people work from the inside out? Yes, definitely. Because that way you don't get halfway through your project and then, oh, doesn't yes. fit. Yes. Right? Yeah, start here and then build out. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this uh, coiling and I'm going to just snip off a piece of it and I'm going to cut on a diagonal on either end. And that's so that it doesn't unravel and it, it'll get, have a little bit of movement, right? Well, you know, what, it, what happens when you do that is it lays nice and flat mm -hmm. next to the spacer. Now the question is, is how much do I put on here in order to have a bangle fit my wrist? So I'm kind of guessing at it. I'm going to come over here. I've strung some beads on. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to curve the mandrel wire. I'm going to slip it on my wrist and kind of bend this wire. It's, it's kind of tricky to do. That's some you, good wire you're working with. It's wonderful wire. And the magic measurement here is an inch and a half. Remember an inch and a half. Remember. <laughs> remember an inch and a half. <laughs> right. So you want an inch and a half from this spacer here to this spacer. And I'm going to kind of estimate that I've got an inch and a half here. I'm going to hold these two wires, and I'm going to go up and down my wrist and see if that's a good fit. Okay. If it's too tight then what I need to do is to add some more beads on, too big, pull some off. And you okay. also want to keep in mind when you're using glass beads, it's better to have a little more width and a little more dangle in your bangle than to make it too tight because if you hit it, that's not wow. funny. Okay, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to make a loop in the end of my wire. I have here long round nose pliers and I'm going to grasp the end and I'm going to rotate my hand away from my body, release, and then rotate once more until it touches here. I'm now going to take chain nose pliers, introduce them into the loop, 
and at the joint rotate my hand towards and this is my where body. like you were saying earlier your good tools really come into play Absolutely. because a bad pair of pliers will snap that right off or flatten out your wire okay. and now round nose pliers I just came back in there and just just touched it just a little bit look at this perfection see got a nice perfection. look now what I'm doing I'm kind of pushing everything to one side and now the question is, where do I cut this wire here in order to get a loop of the same size? So what I suggest you do is take a piece of 12 gauge wire, make your loop with a Sharpie pen, just mark it right at the joint, then unravel it with your round nose pliers and measure it out and you'll know oh. exactly how much you need. So I know when I do that, that it's an inch. I'm gonna take my bangle here and with my cutters, I'm going to leave myself one inch. Okay, and I'm going to snip that off. Now what I'm going to do is back with the round nose pliers. And you're just repeating the process that you originally made, but you're going to leave a little. That's right. <clears throat> See, I made the loop in with the chain nose. Just beautiful, Connie. And right there, okay. So we're well on our way. The last step is to create a clasp. And here what I have is two and a half inches of 14 gauge wire. I'm gonna take this hammer and I'm going to flatten the tip just a little bit, okay? I'm gonna take my small round nose pliers and I'm going to make a little loop. Can you see that? And you repeat that on the other side? Not yet. Oop. <laughs> You'd be in trouble if you do that. <laughs> you want to take your round nose pliers here, right next to the little loop, rotate away from your body. See, now I have that nice right. curve, starting to look like a clasp. And then you would repeat it and create your own toggle. And then you end up with this beautiful bracelet, and here's what the toggle looks like. Magical, beautiful. You're a good wrapper. Thanks, Jack. <laughs> Thanks, Chloe. <laughs> Later, we'll wrap up a perfect birthday present, but after we return, we'll be making a cage for a fabulous gemstone. Welcome back. This is DIY Jewelry Making. My next guest is a wire artist who loves working with semi-precious stones. Welcome, Sue Fiddler. Hi, Sue. Hi. Now, you are going to show us your love of working with semi-precious stones so. by teaching us how to make this gorgeous pendant. Mm -hmm. That's so one of a kind. Yes. All right. What first attracted you to this kind of jewelry? Just like you. I, I was attracted because it's, it's beautiful. It is beautiful. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to get started mm -hmm. by making the pendant. Mm -hmm. First, you choose your stone, okay. and we're using the green just so that we can see the work being done, right? Okay. What's this mm -hmm. little contraption you've got? Well, this is simply a leather piece, and when I'm, I've measured one foot out and measured it one inch segments and also half inch, and instead of having to have a lot of math, all I do is I take the stone at the, the top, roll it till it meets again. There's my four and a half inches. Okay, so instead of using that sixth grade geometry, which mm -hmm. I'm sure we all remember, mm -hmm. <laughs> to figure out the circumference, you're just rolling That's and marking. Right. Okay, That's perfect. It. Okay. So we have a four and a half inch stone. Okay, so I need an extra four inches for the bale. Plus, I also need, I like to have a little flare. So I add So you're a talking bit about more. your wire, because you're uh, going to cut your wire mm -hmm. to fit the circumference of the stone, and you add four inches, but four and a half because you like a little flare. Oh, no, I like a lot of flare. So I add about six inches <laughs> oh, extra. So. You're very flary. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So in the process, or I have gained, I've gotten four pieces of uh, square, 22 soft gauge wire. Okay. And very I important that it be square because you and, want that flat, smooth. And soft. Right. Okay. And so I will find the middle here. 
and I've made a, a little mark. And I'm going to use my fine point uh, felt pen. Someone. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I've got the the pre places Set half where half inch marks and inch marks where I'm going to mark it. So I do the center, do the sides here, and also each side. So you've got four actually And this five is so marks. you see the center of your mm -hmm. wire. This is going to be the base of your pendant, and this is going to be the top. The sides. The, the top sides. Okay, okay. great. And I so, see that you've put a little masking tape on the end. That's so just to hold it. Perfect. Okay. And then after that, I'm going to cut four strips of half round, mm -hmm. and they're going to be an inch and a half long. So I've already done that. And then one at four and a half inches for the bale. Okay. Okay. And for the bale, we're going to take my flat nose pliers, and I'm going to get that just right at the end, and I'm going to flip it so it's going to go this way. Away. Away. While I do the other pieces, I'm going to take just right at the, the top, I'm going to flip those the opposite. I'm going to do four of them just like that. And those you're going to wrap around your original four pieces. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay, so I've got four pieces right here. And so at my mark, the center doesn't get marked or doesn't get wrapped. Right. So I'm going to put that right here, nice and tight. And you're going to use your flat nose pliers, bend it. And then as I do this, I'm going to actually push the, the piece of wire in like that. So when I'm wrapping it, it's You're actually also flattening it. It's it's actually going to fit right up to the wire. Okay. Okay. And then once you do that at all of your markings, you end up with a piece that's going to look like this, mm -hmm. that has the wire wrapping again, again, right here at the base, and then on the upper sides. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Mm -hmm. And so at that point, you're going to take this piece. Mm -hmm. and put it at your center. You're going to take your stone, center it, and wrap it up. And then this is where it takes a little bit of strength. Don't expect to have nice fingernails. <laughs> <laughs> so as you wrap that, I'll just remind everyone that it's really important when you're working with wire, you always want to fold and bend away from you. That's you right. never want one of those ends to yeah. get you. Okay, so we've got our little center here, okay? And this is where we take our felt pen again. And we're going to mark right at the top. Okay. We're going to take this, take it right up there at the mark, flip it up. Turn around, take it at the mark, flip it up. Okay, perfect. And at this point, we're going to take that wrap wire. Mm -hmm. And that's how you secure the two sides together. And we're going to wrap it three times. Beautiful. All right, we'll finish this pendant when we return, and Sue will show us how she made this beauty. Welcome back. I'm Jackie Guerra, and we're learning the fine art of wire wrapping today. And before we went to break, we made a cage for our pendant, and now we're going to get ready to finish it. So, Sue, you've already attached the top. Okay. And now, what we're are you doing? We're separating with a knife here. And it has to be pretty thin because we have to get through to...